Hello and welcome back to Buncee Basics, a guide to getting started. This is the third video in a series that will show you everything you need to know to get started on Buncee. In this video, we're going to talk about the classroom dashboard. We're going to cover creating classes and adding student accounts, which you can do in a couple different ways. We'll talk about creating student accounts manually or via CSV file. You also have the option to have your students join via a class code. We'll talk a little bit about that here, but for more information on that, I highly recommend you check out part six of our series where we talk all about logging in and using Buncee from the student perspective. For Buncee for Schools and District users, we also offer Roster Sync through Google Classroom or Microsoft 365, so we'll talk about that a little bit here as well. We will also cover managing student accounts and creating and sending assignments. So let's get started. So when you log into Buncee, you'll see here your Buncee dashboard where all of your Bunsees live. If you come up here to the top, you'll see we're on our Bunsees tab. To get to our classroom dashboard, we click the classes tab. And now here we are on our classroom dashboard where all of our classes live. Now, if you are a BSD user and you utilize uh, Sync with Google or Sync with Microsoft, your dashboard will look a tiny bit different than this. I am just gonna to go to another tab just to show you as an example. So if, if you have Sync with uh, Microsoft um, and you use Microsoft 365 and that's what you sign in with and that's what you use, you will have this button right here. It'll be right here in red. It'll say Sync with Office 365. And all you would do is click that button right here. And then all of your classes um, that you have in Office 365 will appear here in Buncee exactly as they are in Office 365. And anytime you want to edit those students or those classes, you would go into Microsoft Office, Office 365 and you would edit your classes and your students there. And then just click this Sync with Office 365 button again to resync. The exact same thing goes for Google Classroom. I'm just going to show you this tab right here. Now, if you do sign in with Google and you use Sync with Google Classroom, again, you'll see a red button right here and you just click that to sync. And again, if you need to adjust or edit your students or your classes, um, you just go into Google Classroom, you adjust what you need to adjust, delete what you need to delete, and then come back on Buncee and click this sync with Google Classroom button again. But for those of you that do not have BSD or do not uh, wish to sync with Google Classroom, um, your dashboard will look just like this. And we can talk about adding uh, new classes and adding students to them at this point. Now, BSD users, I highly suggest you stick around because we are gonna talk about assignments in just a moment. Um, so I wanna draw your attention. Each class has a name, it has the number of students. It also has this class code right here. Um, and I'm just gonna talk about this really briefly. I highly recommend you check out part six where we talk all about um, the student's perspective of Buncee. So we'll talk more about using class codes in just a minute um, in that video. But um, class codes in Buncee, just so you're aware, they don't mean that students can join a live session or a live class. It doesn't work quite that way. It just gives you two other options for students joining a class. So if a student has never used Buncee, they don't have an account, they can use a class code to sign up for Buncee and to be entered into this class. They can also, if they already have a Buncee account and they want to just be added to a specific class, they can use this code to enter to join this class. Um, so again, they can either use it if they're brand new to Buncee, they can sign up and be put into this class, or perhaps another teacher in the building already has an account, um, so that student has an account with that teacher. Um, they can join your class as well uh, if you provide them with this class code. And again, we'll go over all that in much more detail in part six, where we talk about Buncee from the student's perspective. Now, a couple things before we get started creating a new class. Um, you have a couple options here. If you click on a class, if you click on the three dots right here, you have the option to rename or archive a class. Um, if you want to rename it, perhaps you just want to reorganize things, that's fine, you can do that. Or if you archive it, um, it tucks it away in a different folder. So if we come up here to the top uh, under filter, 
You'll see these are all of our active classes right now. If I were to click on archived, um, I would see all of my archived classes, my older classes. Um, so if I wanted to, I can click into there and see those. Um, now, if I want to unarchive a class, I would just go into that folder and I would, this would say unarchive, I would click unarchive, and then it would appear back here on my normal classroom dashboard. So without any further ado, let's get started making a new class. So if you want to create a new class, as always in Buncee, uh, anytime you want to create something new, you just click a plus sign. So we're going to click that. And let's say we want to name our class, maybe we want to name it Math 3. And yeah, sure, why not? Our subject can be Geometry. This is optional, but why not? And yes, maybe we want to do 10th grade. So now we can just click Create. And now our class is here. And to add our students, we just click on this class. And as you can see, our class is empty. If we want to add students, if we want to share that class code with them, we can do that and then they'll be added to this class. Or we can add our students manually. So you can come over here to Add Students and click that. Now, there's a couple ways we can kind of add students. We can either type in their name and their username and add a password for them. Um, if we have made students previously, we can click add from student list. Maybe we had a class from last year or maybe, um, you know, we have uh, another class that we just, or, you know, we have another, um, you know, class with students in it. Some of, there's some overlap and we want to add them to this class as well. We can do that by clicking add from student list. We can also import from CSV. If we have a CSV file with all of this information in it already, we can just import from there. Um, but we're just going to try creating from scratch, totally from scratch. So we can go ahead and put, maybe this name, student's name is student one, their last name is one, and their username is S1. No, it's not. We'll just say student one, one. Let's see, there we go. Um, we can have the option to add a password for this student, or we can use one password. We're just going to do that. Perhaps our password is Buncee. And then we're going to click the plus sign again to add. So now we've added our first student. Let's do one more, just so you guys can see it again. We can do student two. Their last name is two. And their username will be student two, two, let's see. And since we've chosen one password, they have all the one password right now, and they can change that later if they need. Can click on the plus sign, and our students have been added. So we can go ahead and click save to. And if we want to download this information so that we have it, we can click download, and it gives us a little CSV file with that information in it. So now that we have our students, we can do a couple different things with them. We can create a group. We can come up here to the top and we can click edit group to add a group. So perhaps if you have um, maybe a, a reading group one and a reading group two, maybe you have a higher level group and a lower level group or a mid-level group, whatever the case may be, you can group your students. Um, so you can click new group. Maybe this is group one. Click add. And now our group one is here. If we want to click a new one, we can do, let's do group two. We'll click add. So now we have our two groups and we can add more if we need to. Um, and we can just drag our students in here and put them where we need to put them. Um, and if you want to, student two can be in. Students can be in more than one group if you want. It's up to you. Um, however you want to arrange things. I can just click the X to get rid of uh, that if I don't like it. So now my students are in two different groups. And this will come in handy if I want to assign something. Maybe I want to assign something only to group one and I want to assign group two maybe something a little bit different. And this really helps for uh, differentiated learning and kind of, um, you know, being able to focus on your students a little bit more. So we can click close when we're done or this X right here and our changes are saved. 
So I'm gonna open up another class. This is a brand new class, so there's no information in here. So I'm gonna show you some more things that you can do with classes uh, once you have kind of some more information in there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click on my art class. And there's a couple different things we can do here. So if we click on edit right here, we can see that, um, we can see this student's name, last name, username, and we can see their password. Now you'll notice here that this student has pictures as their password. So right now we have uh, enable simple login toggled. So that means that um, if you have maybe a younger student or a student you know, with different needs perhaps, um, it might be challenging for them to type in a password every single time they wanna log in. So we have the option of having them choose two images uh, instead. So if I want to toggle, if I wanna enable that, um, if they had a password, it would be here. I could change and edit that uh, if I need to. But if I want to enable that simple login, all I do is click here and I can choose my two images. If I want to change them, I can click here, change, and I just select um, my images. So I can, I can just click, I can deselect them. And now I can, maybe I want to choose butterfly box. And those are the two pictures that the student would enter when they log in. Click save. And I'm happy with that. And now I can click save. And again, I would highly recommend checking out part six where we talk all about uh, how the student would log in and how they would use Buncee. And we can kind of go over um, simple login in a little bit more detail. You can see it in action on the student's perspective. So let's say I don't need to edit anything right now. I can just, I just want to see what's going on with this student. Um, as you can see here, I can see the badges that the student has earned. I can see how many Buncees they've made and I can see uh, what assignments they've submitted. But if I click this arrow, I can see all of that in a little bit more detail. So here I can see every Buncee that my student has created. So I can keep tabs on that. I can see what they're making. If I want to see submissions, I can see where they've turned in uh, an assignment. I can see, uh, was it graded? Was it turned in? Was it maybe started, but not graded or not turned in yet? Um, under submissions here, again, I can see all, I can filter it also. I can see ones that were not graded and then I can see ones that were graded. We're gonna talk about that a little bit more in detail when I show you assignments. We can also, uh, like I mentioned before, we can see the students' badges. We can see which ones they've achieved and which ones they're still working on. Um, and for more information on badges, I would highly recommend checking out part five of this series where we talk all about badges. So we can X out of that. For assignments, I can see the assignments for this class. If I come up here, right now I'm on students, I can see assignments right here. So these are all of the assignments that have been added for this class. I can go ahead and click this arrow here and I can see only one student has uh, turned in this assignment. That's all right. Um, it was on time, so that's good. Um, if I click here, I can see the answers. So I can see kind of what, um, you know, the progress of this, uh, of this assignment is. And if I want to, I can give it a grade. I can give it a 100 because I think it's great. I can add my remark here if I want to do something like that. And then I can I can either return this submission to uh, to my uh, to my student or I can update this grade and I can just grade it. So I can click that. And now it's been graded so it will appear in graded. Uh, now you may remember from our uh, creation um, our creation video that you can uh, enter free response questions or multiple choice questions um, and this is how you would kind of grade those on your end you can come over here so this this one I know has at least one question so I can click this arrow I can click on these are my two students that have create that have uh, done this so I can let's see I'll do this one I can click on answers now this part, this uh, this one had a multiple choice question in it. So this is the question, and they did not answer it. Um, but I can see uh, if they do answer it, I can see it here, and I can determine was it you know, is it correct. Um, this will tell me is it correct. But then I can still offer 
a grade on this uh, answer as well. So for, um, if we want to create a new assignment, we can click here, we can click add assignment. Then we can, there's a, it gives us a lot of options. We can click here to add a bun seat. Now perhaps this is an instruction page or um, maybe it's an example, maybe it's something that you want your students to copy and then add on to, uh, whatever the case may be. You can scroll to find uh, the Buncee that you want. Um, it will sort them by um, most recently created or opened, so just be aware of that. So I can click on this circle Buncee and I can add it, and I can title this circle activity. And I can say, um, complete each question on each page um, as my description. There are instructions in here as well, but just to kind of be a little bit more clear. Um, and then if I want to, um, so I have put my students into three groups. If I want to, I can only assign this to group one or if I want to, or only to group two or group three, whatever the case is, um, or I can just assign it to all students. I can choose the start date, I can choose the due date. Um, all of this looks good to me though, so I'm just going to click submit. And now this assignment is here. And then again, to see what it would look like from the student's perspective, where they would see this assignment, um, Again, highly recommend checking out part six where we talk all about the student's perspective of Buncee. But for right now, I can see that my assignment is in Buncee and it's in my students can see it. And now we're back at our classroom dashboard. So thank you so much for watching. Um, be sure to check out part four of our series where we talk all about Buncee boards.